Welcome back. Uh, so today we're going to talk about, we've actually gotten a couple questions on this, what's the difference between deer antler velvet and deer antler velvet extract, which is the spray form, liposomal form, mm -hmm. uh, that is pretty common. Yeah, it's become a lot more popular, and that's one of the things that people think of when you say deer antler velvet, uh, the big band substance uh, 13. Which um, Ray Lewis was a big part of that, the football player, right. which that's what he was taking was a spray under the tongue version yeah. um, of a deer antler extract. Yeah, so that made a lot of press, and that has, uh, a lot of people don't really understand the difference between right. the two, I suppose. And we've gotten questions on, for your product, is it a banned substance? Can I take it if I want to compete in sport, whether it's CrossFit, weightlifting, uh, you're a football athlete, mm -hmm. baseball athlete, you know, what's in it, is it banned? Basically, I don't want to get popped for something. You yeah. know, I'm just looking to expedite my recovery and really work at my full potential. Right, so with all these discussions that we've been having here on Facebook Live, the first question is, what is your goal, right? That is the starting point, no matter what supplement you're evaluating. Uh, you need to understand the reason why you're taking it, and that's the only way you can gauge if you're getting the desired results out of it. Right. right, and that's that's really the main breakdown between the difference of deer antler velvet that, like our product, for example, is capsule form. So it's in its purest form. Um, it's essentially just the ground up velvet itself, versus the extract, which is obviously liquid form. Um, and really, what they're doing is deer antler velvet contains insulin growth factor one, mm -hmm. uh, which they're just extracting that out to make it a liquid form so you can spray it so it faster absorb. In well, directly into the bloodstream. Yeah, you know, and, and it's required. Out. One of the things with uh, insulin growth factor one, IGF one, that's uh, going to be a, uh, a, uh, an acronym we're going to use a lot throughout this. IGF one. IGF one. Right. So get used to it here. Um, but it, it's that main growth factor. You can't take it orally. Your stomach acids destroy it. It needs to be absorbed. You can't like digest someone. it in your stomach. Yeah, exactly. Yep, exactly. So, so it has um, to go directly into your bloodstream, which you do through under the tongue. Right. Um, and it's absorbed. So really, you know, let's get into what is IGF-1, which your body naturally produces it, mm -hmm. uh, but this is a substance that is also supplemented by mostly bodybuilders mm -hmm. uh, because it allows tissue growth, which as I said before, your body, body naturally makes it. As you're growing and going through puberty, your body naturally makes HGH, human growth hormone, mm -hmm. uh, which then s stimulates your body to produce IGF-1. Right. Uh, which it, you create it all through your life, uh, exercising, further stimulates so you produce more. And it's also found in a lot of common foods. IGF-1 like, is, yeah. yeah uh, meat, mm -hmm. uh, things like eggs, milk is another big one. Right. All of them, it, it's, it's a naturally occurring substance. Absolutely, and that's why it's in deer antler velvet, which mm -hmm. is obviously a fast growing substance itself mm -hmm. uh, with the antlers. Um, yeah, exactly, and so the reason that people take it is because they want their body to grow, which bodybuilders is obviously the easiest example of it. Mm -hmm. um, so for the extract itself, that is the main thing that they're looking to elicit. So they pull that from the velvet. Um, it's a consolidated form, which if you're looking mm -hmm. at the labels on different extracts, um, it's all over the place in terms of different units of measure, what's in it, right. how much deer antler velvet itself is in the extract versus how much IGF-1 is in the extract. Yeah, so there, there are layers of things that make this complicated, right? right? And let's let's start at the kind of the top of the pyramid with um, the, the ban that was lifted in 2013 from the World Anti-Doping uh, Agency. Right, which is interesting because deer antler velvet itself um, was a banned substance because they didn't know what it was. They had to do further testing. Mm -hmm. And then that ban was lifted by the World Anti-Doping Agency, WADA, mm -hmm. because they found that it had insignificant amounts of IGF-1. So it which, does contain IGF-1, just very, very small Very amounts. small amounts. And that's for the velvet itself or the extract. So what the extract is hoping to do is pull more of that, consolidate more IGF-1, mm -hmm so it's more effective in so, taking. And part of the reason why it was banned initially is because the the athlete or athletes that were caught said, well, I'm only taking deer antler velvet, nothing else. So then that right. poses the question, where in the chain was somebody lied to? Was it the manufacturer who put something in there that wasn't actually just deer antler velvet? Was it the coach who was mixing deer antler velvet with another product, some sort of steroid? Or was the athlete Or lying? was the athlete lying and actually right. just taking steroids on the side? Right, because the example you were talking about was it was a major league baseball player that tested positive for methyl testosterone, mm -hmm. and they said all they were taking was a deer antler velvet extract, a spray, uh, and they tested positive for this and they didn't know why. So they did further testing on the extract itself, found that Yes, it contains IGF-1, 
but in insignificant amounts. Like 1% of what would be... So let's, let's get into so what the amounts would actually be. So a lot of these extracts tout that they have you know, they Active 70 IGF pounds one. of yeah. antler velvet. They condense that down into this two ounce bottle that you spray in your tongue four times a day. Mm -hmm. um, and it gives you different amounts of IGF-1, which one of the most potent ones that we could find, which was about $180 a bottle, um, said it had 400 nanograms of IGF-1 per serving, per day. Mm -hmm. um, so we looked into, well, how much IGF-1 would you take if you were just supplementing that illegally, not for sport, didn't care about failing a blood test? Right. All you wanted to do was build muscle. What would be the recommended dosage of IGF-1 to take? Right, and it's not nanograms, it's micrograms, MCG. Mm -hmm. It's about 40 micrograms, 40 to 100 per day over the course of four weeks. It's like a normal cycle that you would take. Mm -hmm. uh, which, if you're comparing micrograms to nanograms, it's a factor of 1,000 nanograms is smaller. Mm -hmm. So if you have 400 nanograms per serving, that's 0.4 micrograms. Yep or 1% of an actual dose that you would take if you're taking IGF-1. So even the most potent form of the spray mm -hmm. is 1% of a dosage of IGF-1. And that's why the spray is not a banned substance. It's insignificant. They yeah. tested it and said, yes, it contains a banned substance, but right. trace amounts that wouldn't cause any effect or unfair advantage for sport. Right. And, and that's, that's, that's yeah. kind of why it's confusing that, well, how is IGF-1 banned, all these sprays Front and center on the label, they say active IGF-1. IGF-1 as deer antler velvet extract, but how is that substance okay? Mm -hmm. And just because it's insignificant. Yeah. So, and that's how it ties back into some of the stuff we've talked about in earlier episodes of this about labeling and some of that gray area that the FDA mm -hmm. allows companies to put in there. And that's absolutely part of it. On the back of a label, when you see MG, MCG, NG, it's hard to know exactly what the or is a nanogram bigger or smaller than a microgram. Right. Right. So it it's not misleading in the sense they are using the the proper terminology, but it's misleading in the sense that the average consumer doesn't necessarily understand how what the dosage is. is and then how that compares to what's actually in the bottle. Right. And then furthermore, we talked about proprietary blends, one of those mm -hmm. catch-all phrases. Extract is another one of those words. When you see deer antler velvet extract. That extract is a key word. That doesn't mean it's pure deer antler velvet. If it's a concentrate or uh, so something of that nature, it's a chemical process by nature, right? right. So you're, you're getting rid of that whole food aspect and trying to distill it down into something that's into more potent. one specific component, which going back to what is your goal, the goal of the sprays is to get insulin growth factor one in your system. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the sprays, they've been proven just to be insignificant, and then you miss out on if you're taking deer antler velvet as a capsule, like the life product, mm -hmm. that is the whole food version. Right. So you're getting, you know, it's a strong calcium base. It's unadulterated. Yep. Hyaluronic acid, glucosamine, chondroitin, other mm -hmm. proteins and enzymes, similar to growth factor one, not necessarily growth factor one, not in significant amounts. Right. But by combining all these things together, um, it's like we talked about before, the entourage effect in that having this as the whole food, the sum of the parts is greater than each individual part. And right. that's what creates such a positive effect. Well, and just as we know how our product is handled and that it's never heated and it's cold processed and put immediately in its raw form into the capsules, the same goes for the extracts where you don't know what process they used to create that extract or concentrate. Right. And a lot of times it's an alcohol-based concentrate, and guess what? You know how you get rid of the alcohol from the concentrate? You burn it. That's usually yeah. what you do. So a lot of those extracts, if they've been heated, all of those bioactive growth factors they're talking about, a lot of them were probably killed off in the manufacturing mm -hmm. process. And then you don't know um, to supplement the IGF-1 that they're putting into it. Mm -hmm. It might not all be from deer antler velvet itself. It could be from other sources as well. Yep. And that's where it's kind of like that gray area. You don't really know what's in it. And that's yeah. why, so um, currently deer antler velvet and deer antler velvet extract are not banned substances, but they are on the list of basically watch out for these mm -hmm. and be careful. Yeah. Because you could test positive, like the baseball player tested positive for methyl testosterone when it wasn't in the substance, which like you said, we don't know if it was poor manufacturing, was it a tainted supply? Right. Uh, I think that's what the company claimed well, was it was a tainted supply. And what's supply. scary about some of these supplements, if you're buying them from a company that doesn't provide transparency in their manufacturing process and their handling and mm -hmm. their supply chain, um, you, you just simply don't know. And those supplement companies that maybe aren't of the highest moral standard, they'll mix in substances to give you the desired result so that you keep buying it regardless of what it does to your body. So right. they might mix their fake deer antler velvet 
with legitimate steroids so that you take it and say, wow, I feel great, this is really good, Deerantler Velvet works. Mm -hmm. It's, it's all part of that, that mystery and that shroud where it's very hard as just an end consumer to verify what product you have, unless you're one of right. those people that goes out there and actually takes samples and has them tested before you take it, which I'm sure is a minority. I mean, most people don't have that kind of it's expensive. that kind of time or money to spend on just normal supplements. So exactly, um, that that's why it's scary. And you know, when you're talking about you know supplements that help you work out, recover, feel better, you just really need to know at least the best of your ability where it's from and what's in it. Right. Exactly. The labeling and the sourcing are really important. Mm -hmm. so. And then, like you said, you know, going back to the goals. You know, for taking life deer antler velvet, for example, the goal isn't to get an effective dose of insulin growth factor one. Right. It's taking this whole food supplement that you know has a lot of other factors in it that support healthy joint function, mm -hmm. repairing smooth tissue, yep. uh, which really goes to if you exercise frequency and you work out hard, you need those things to recover mm -hmm. quickly and effectively. Yeah. Or if you have beat up joints, you know, if you're in your 50s or 60s and you played sports all your life and, and you have osteoporosis, yeah. osteoarthritis, you know, it goes to help those things too. Right. It's not just about the IGF-1, the, the collagen, the hyaluronic acid. Everything else. There's so many other good things, so many other minerals that make it a whole food and right. that's what we keep coming back to. Once once you turn it into a concentrate, you can no longer call it a whole food and that, that is one of the, the more positive aspects mm -hmm. of what Deere and Velvet provides. Right. And that's when it becomes just the, the marketing play. You mm -hmm. know, they know that IGF-1 is sought after by a lot of athletes yeah um, and they can throw around like we said all the different units of measure you don't know how much is in it how much is effective yep uh, they can just say you know, we have this the most pure version on the market triple the potency of any other and it's two hundred dollars a bottle yeah and I don't know if that's cost effective exactly it's tough it's tough out there folks there's a lot of misinformation but there's also a lot of good information Keep fighting the good fight. Keep trying to unturn those stones. And read your labels. Yeah, read your labels. Like we always go back to, any good reputable uh, supplement company or any product for humans will will be relatively transparent. If they've mm -hmm. gone through the motions to make sure all of these things are done properly and they're bringing you a good product, they're going to be proud of it and they're going to want to tell you yep. about it. Because it takes time, it takes money. And, and it's something to be proud of. It's something to be proud of. It's a way to stand out in the marketplace. So. Mm -hmm. Um, good luck out there. Uh, thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys uh, yeah. again next time. And if you guys have any questions, contact at DAV.life. Hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, mm -hmm. email, whatever works. Yep, we're on all the social media. Now we've got a YouTube channel as well where these videos will be archived. So you We can do. Find so if it's your first time media. watching, go back and watch some of the other ones. We talk about lots of interesting stuff, and, and if you want us to cover any topics in particular, let us know too. Yeah, absolutely. Always looking for ideas. All right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.